So this week we'll be looking at the standardization of hydrochloric acid. Now, in standardizing hydrochloric acid, we'll be making use of borax. And borax can be used as a primary standard mainly because it is stable under normal storage conditions. It is readily obtained in, in a pure form, right? So you can get borax at purities of 99.99%. All right, its stoichiometry is, is well known and it exists as relatively large crystals, right? And so it's easy to, to, to measure out. That's important. And these are some of the main properties that a primary standard um, um, need to, needs to have. Now, in solution, what happens with uh, borax, here it is, borax, is that it tends to dissociate. You get your sodium ions and your, your borate ion and also some water. But uh, it also tends to hydrolyze, all right, to produce this compound here, which we refer to as boric acid, all right? Or you might even see some places referring to, to it as hydrogen boric, okay. And then you have also hydroxide ions being produced. Now, that is interesting because if we want to standardize hydrochloric acid, if we are using borax and borax is producing hydroxide ions, then those hydroxide ions could react with hydrochloric acid. And if we know, and of course we will know, the amount of borax that we are using, then we can easily work out the number of moles of hydroxide ions. Okay, as you can see here, if you look at borax, here it is. Let me get a laser pointer here. All right. Borax, one mole of borax would produce or will produce two moles of hydroxide ions. Okay, so if we have 10 moles of borax, then we will end up with uh, 20 moles of hydroxide ions. So once we know the number of moles of borax that we're working with, then we can easily figure out via the mole ratio the number of moles of hydroxide ions. And so if we should titrate a solution of borax with hydrochloric acid, right? And if we don't know the concentration of the hydrochloric acid, once you know the amount of borax or the number of moles of borax that we are working with, and hence the number of moles of hydroxide ions, you could figure out the number of moles of hydrochloric acid in the tighter volume. Okay. Now, one of the things you should know, you should um, know is that once you put the borax in solution, right? So you put your, you get your borax, you weigh out your borax carefully and your analytical balance, and you get your borax into your conical glass and you dissolve the borax in water. Of course, it will then produce the hydroxide ions, but there is something else. This boric acid is produced as well. That's, that's, you, you must take note of that. Boric acid is produced. So even when you titrate with hydrochloric acid and all the hydroxide ions um, um, gets used up, you will have boric acid there in solution. Hence, after titrating, after titrating all of the hydroxide ions, you will have an, you will still have boric acid. And so the pH will not be 7. It will be a little bit below 7. Well, it will be all the way down at about uh, 4.8 there about. And so you have to be careful in choosing your indicator. We will be using screened methyl orange SMO, right, which will change basically to colorless right at that pH, all right? So screen methyl orange will change basically, and we have to be careful with the use of screen methyl orange. We have to add about a drop of that indicator, and we have to watch the color change carefully because it will tend to go to uh, gray and then to just to colorless. So we have to pay attention to that, or else you could miss the end point easily. All right? Now, of course... As usual, we have to ensure that we read the, 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 uh, the burette at eye level, 
All right, we have to ensure we read at eye level. We have to be careful with that. Now, another another thing, another thing that you should be uh, aware of is that from your manual, as you can see, the manual says, let's see, where is it? It says, we accurately in triplicate on an analytical balance, of course, about 0.15 grams of borax into uh, 150 cm cube conical flask. All right. So you you have three conical flasks and the, and you want to get one about 0.15 grams of borax in each of them. Of course, you are not going to put the conical flask on the analytical balance. I'm sure they will be too heavy. All right, especially a 150 mil conical flask. So this is what you will do. You will just get a beaker. All right. You will just get a beaker and you will put inside that beaker, let's see, three times 0 0.15, 0 0.45. About 0 0.45 grams of borax in that beaker. Small beaker, right? Or maybe a, a 100 mil beaker or something like that. Small beaker. So you put about 0 0.45 grams of borax in the beaker. And you'll be careful, be careful in removing from that beaker about 0.15 grams or, you know, shaking from that beaker 0.15 grams of borax, about 0.15 grams of borax into each of the conical flasks. Of course, it will not be exact. It will not be exact. But guess what? It does not have to be. All right? So if, if you're lucky and in one of them you got 0.15 exact, oh, good. That's good. And you can know that because every every removal you'll you'll reweigh, right? The 100 ml beaker and its contents. So let's say you start out with this conical flask, right? You have 0.45 grams of borax in your 100 ml beaker, and you gently shake some of it out into this uh, conical flask, and then that 100 ml beaker and its contents, you just put that back on the balance. And take the weight. Okay? Then you go to the next beaker and you shake out again and go back and reweigh the um the 100 ml beaker and its contents. And then you get the last amount out into this conical flask. Now, even after removing the last amount, you still have to have to weigh the beaker and its contents, right? To know exactly what is going on, how much is in each of your conical flasks, right? Because, of course, you would have the initial mass of the beaker, right? Before you added the uh, borax to it. And then you have the final mass after you, take out the, after you took out the last amount of uh, borax. Now, why is all this important? Why am I telling you all of this? Well, one... You have to note that not all the conical flasks will contain the same mass of borax and therefore they will not contain the same number of moles of borax. If they don't contain the same number of moles of borax, then they will not contain the same number of moles of hydroxide ion. Right? And so they will not require the same volume of hydrochloric acid to reach or to arrive at the end point. Okay? The volumes then might not be close. They might not be close. Okay? If you are lucky, if you are lucky, and all three of them contain the same 0.15 grams, and this is unlikely, it is unlikely that you'll be able to do this. Uh, but if you are lucky and all of them contain the same 0.15 grams, okay, you will get the same tighter volume. But I, I don't think this will happen. I don't uh, suspect that this will happen. And so the tighter volumes will not be close. That is okay. What should be close, however, is the concentration of hydrochloric acid as calculated based on the data collected from the titration of each of the contents of each conical flask. 
right? So you'll have to calculate the concentration based on this conical flask, based on this one, and based on that one. And when you calculate those three concentrations for hydrochloric acid, they should agree to within 0 0.05 moles per dm cube. Right? So what that means is that you have to calculate the number of moles of borax in each of the conical flasks. And then use that information to determine the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. And it is at the end when you would have calculated the concentrations right for based on each titration that you will take the average okay right so think about that good luck in the labs